This is my message for the greatest country in the world. In the light of the recent events in the United States, I felt morally obliged to shed light on a very similar chain of events that took place in my country during the 90s. The cause of those events was the same, a constantly re-emerging ultimate evil, nihilistic, non-theistic religion slash cult that caused hundreds of millions of deaths in the 20th century and countless suffering. Now, proponents of that religion want to run the experiment once again, and in that experiment, you people of America will be lab mice. Not so long ago, I was a lab mouse of dictators in my country. That country was Yugoslavia. Rather than giving you lessons about history of my country, I want to give you the timeline of the events which led to an extremely bloody war and dissolution of Yugoslavian Federacy. I will leave it to you to make conclusions about similarities with recent events in the United States. In the 1989, the fall of the Berlin Wall marked the victory of the free world over tyrannical monstrosity of communism across the Europe. However, Yugoslav communists didn't feel like letting go of their precious powers. Since the climate in Europe was extremely anti-communist at the time, they knew they needed a new strategy, an ideology that would seduce the masses and keep the power in their hands. So they come up with a very clever idea, to rebrand the communism in Yugoslavia and to change its name into socialism. Not any type of socialism, but a very special type, the national socialism. Sounds familiar. The playbook they used to progress with their agenda was already tested in Nazi Germany. To establish national socialism, you must first install hatred in people. In order to create genocidal levels of hatred, you must divide people of one country in well-defined groups. In other words, you must create tribal or groupthink. This can be achieved in different ways. You can divide people by ethnicity, by race, by religion, you can let your imagination go wild. Since Yugoslavs were white and practically indistinguishable among themselves, the only card they could play was the religion card. Yugoslavia was very mixed religion-wise, and we had Orthodox Christian Serbs, Catholic Croats and Slovenes, and Muslim Bosnians. A perfect starting position. In the next phase, you must start making such social policies so terrible that will inevitably lead to the countless individual disadvantages. When the consequences of such government policies become obvious, you must start claiming that the cause of those inequalities is nothing but discrimination and hatred of one group towards another and naturally you must start screaming that those inequalities must be corrected by favoring the oppressed, discriminated group over the oppressor group. Enter national quotas for hiring. Now just replace national with race or women. Once the groups are formed and well defined, it's needless to say that all the mainstream media in Yugoslavia were government controlled and were fueling the narrative about mutual discrimination and hatred relentlessly. The growing fear and feeling of insecurity destroyed relationships, marriages, friendships. As fear of discrimination and hostility among groups were growing, people started retreating and isolating within their own groups because they didn't feel safe anymore with the individuals of the other group. All of a sudden, staged and very well organized mass protests started all over the country. Protests against the oppression and killing of one group by another. At first, those protests were peaceful, but soon enough, rioting and burning started. Now that you have the attention of the public, you need sparks. What is a spark? A spark is a convenient event of murdering of a random member of one group by a hateful member of another. And you usually need more than one of those. At this point, people were still not completely divided. There were still reasonable people left, those who understood we are all one nation under God, and that we will not kill each other under any circumstances. They went out protesting together, singing for peace and holding their hands. But the hunger for the absolute power of socialists was stronger than our love for each other. And shootings and attacks at protesters continued. In the next phase, the tipping point with no return was reached. People started erecting barricades at the entrance of their cities, their neighborhoods, even on highways and roads. Barricades were guarded with armed civilians. Each and every attempt of the law enforcement to remove barricades and to de-escalate the situation was in vain, since they would be ambushed and killed. Peace couldn't be restored anymore. 
because headlines, photos and videos of dead people propagated through mass media became too explicit and horrifying. Even those hardcore idealists who believed in one nation under God, peace and love, snapped under the pressure. At that point, army was deployed to restore order. But they couldn't do much, because they were clueless about who was the perpetrator and who was the victim. Simply because there, there were perpetrators and victims on both sides. In the final stages, even the army was attacked during the negotiated retreat and 50 or 100 soldiers were killed. And just like that, Yugoslavia found itself in a civil war. City against city, village against village, family against family, and so on until the whole territories became cleaned of the members of the enemy group. Genocide, ethnic cleansing, relocation of hundreds of thousands of people were everyday news. It lasted four years. 100,000 people died. Some 500,000 were displaced. Those people lost everything. Yugoslavia was drowned in the bloods of thousands of innocent people and destroyed forever. You might wonder how we let that happen. How could we let things get so much out of control? That was because we didn't realize who were the real enemies. The enemies of the Yugoslav people as a whole. Instead, we were brainwashed into buying the story that we, the people, are the enemies of each other. While our true enemies were advancing with their sick, demented agenda, which had as the ultimate goal the total and unlimited power. This brings me to present times, the year 2020, and to you, American people. Unless you were living under the rock, you might have noticed that something very strange and vicious is happening in your country. But you're not exactly sure what it is and where it came from. Because the last time you checked, you were one nation under God, a country of free, independent individuals with equal rights under the law and core values of life, liberty and pursuit of happiness. All of a the sudden, there is protesting, rioting, arson, murder, destruction of public and private property, and lots of lots of people screaming how unbelievably racist and unjust America is. And before you even manage to prepare your morning coffee and turn the TV on, once United Americans are at each other's throat, and a bunch of nice and caring people on TV are telling you how you should accept the violence and hatred against Americans because you deserve it. If you have paid attention to what happened in Yugoslavia, I hope you have realized by now that your true enemies are not your fellow Americans. The ones who are, they want you to hate each other and to kill each other while they're taking away your constitutional rights, your freedoms and your country, your heritage, your way of life and the future of your children. Although it is more than obvious that there are very well organized groups used as tools to install and amplify hate and to create a division between Americans, there are only metastases which have spread through once healthy America. Of course, there are violent terrorist organizations and they must be removed as well. But the main cancer that is killing America, the one where all this mayhem is coming from, is somewhere else. The real and extremely dangerous enemies of American people are the elected officials in your government, in your states, in your courts. Representatives, governors, mayors, judges. The ones who are pulling the ropes. The ones who hate America and American people so much that would even sacrifice the life and prosperity of their own children just to see it burned to the ground and American blood spilled. Those are really sick, demented, ideologically possessed people. And they are in high positions in the government. They are governing your states, your cities and making decisions in your courts. You know very well who they are. You know very well what they already did to once beautiful and prosperous American states and cities. They are resentful, power and bloodthirsty. They want you and your children suffering in misery and begging them for mercy. They won't stop, no matter how much you try to appease them. Unless you, American people, stop them. You're maybe thinking this is not possible. But think again. How many of them tyrants are out there? And how many of you decent American people? What makes them think they can do whatever they want with you? That they can play you for a fool over and over again? and that they're invincible? What makes them think they're gods, morally and intellectually superior compared to you, freedom-loving Americans? 
Yes, you guessed it. The fact that they managed to get away with it every single time. They faced no pushback and not a single consequence for their crimes against the American people. The time has come for them to pay for their treason. How you should act? First thing that you must do, stop caring whether you've been called a racist, a white supremacist, a selfish person who wants to spread the C-1984, or whatever nice name they have for you. This irrational fear of stigma, a phobia of being called a racist, has way more destructive implications than you can even imagine. Stop caring whether you offend anyone. Number of people offended by you practicing your First Amendment rights is directly proportional to how successful you are in that. Which means, the more offended, the merrier. Stop attempting to have a fact or logic-based rational conversation. Stop explaining yourself. It's useless. You're wasting your precious time and energy. They have a playbook and changing their minds is not part of it. Second, exercise your Second Amendment rights. This means, study carefully and in detail gun laws in your state. Next, arm yourself. If you have never used a gun before, make sure to take a basic gun training. This is very important because you must know how to use a gun properly to protect yourself, your family and your property, so that you can avoid hurting yourself or innocent people as a consequence of improper gun use. Be a responsible gun owner. Third and most important, exercise your First Amendment rights. Of course, it is very important to vote in November, but I'm afraid it will not be enough. I have seen such a diversity of ways socialists used to steal the elections in Yugoslavia and I'm absolutely sure your tyrants will give their best to do the same. You must act now. You must go out on the streets, peacefully assemble and protest against tyranny and infringement of your God-given rights. Millions and millions of you decent American people, you must have your voices heard. You must send a very loud and a very clear message to the elected officials in the federal government and in your states that enough is enough and that you want them to take action now against tyranny. Remind them why you voted for them and why they are elected. Remind them of their sacred duty to protect the vision of founding fathers of the United States of America. Tell them you want your constitutional rights defended and protected. Tell them you want your history preserved. Tell them you want to be able to freely exercise your rights to free speech, to be able to freely and openly show the love for your country, to be able to proudly put American flag in front of your house, and to openly show your pride of your heritage, your culture and your nation. Tell them you stand proudly with American law enforcement and that you got their back in the same way you want them to have yours. Tell them you want to be treated as grown-up individuals who can make their own decisions. Tell them that there is no place for socialism in America. Tell them you want the traitors of American people out of their offices and out of government. Tell them you want them charged and prosecuted for treason and crimes against humanity. And that if they are not removed from the government and from their offices, that you, freedom-loving Americans, will unleash all your anger on tyrants and you will remove them yourself. It is your constitutional obligation to protect the legacy of Founding Fathers and to fight against any form of tyrannical government which infringes upon your constitutional rights. Never forget why you celebrate the Independence Day. Don't be afraid whether you will get attacked for exercising your First Amendment rights. You certainly will be. If that happens, defend yourself. Remember, self-defense is not violence, no matter what they tell you and what they accuse you of. President Trump is on your side, and on the side of liberty. Because if he weren't, they wouldn't try this hard to sabotage him in every way possible, to make a nightmare out of his life and his presidency, and to remove him from the office. He is in their way of them getting what they want. But he cannot fight this battle alone. He is having a very hard time right now, defending your freedoms. That's why you must show him you stand tall and proud with him, united in a fight against tyranny, against hate and violence, and against the ultimate evil of socialism. You must show your open and unlimited support to his vision of draining the swamp, and protecting the law and order and freedoms of American people. You must understand that, besides being a gatekeeper of free America, President Trump is also a gatekeeper of the free world. This means that if we, 
free people of the world lose America, we will lose the world as well. You must not make the same mistakes as Yugoslavs made. Because the only casualties of our mistakes were ourselves. This is different because now the future of the whole free world is in your hands. Having all that said, I hope you will go out on 4th of July in tens of millions and celebrate Independence Day with your president as you should, as free Americans. God bless President Trump and God bless America.